Hi everybody, Daniel here from Basement Tech. Hey, I have to apologize that I haven't made a video in quite some time, but I've been really busy trying to get ready for the Milwaukee Maker Fair, which is next weekend, September 23rd and 24th at um, the State Fair Park in Milwaukee. Um, I'm sure you can find it online. Just Google for Milwaukee Maker Fair. Um, in this video, I want to do three things. One, um, I wanted to do that, announce again that the Maker Fair is coming up. Secondly, I keep threatening to do a quick video on my Weber grill automation project. So I want to do a little bit of an anatomy uh, uh, video on that one. So I'll do that. And then finally, a quick glimpse at some of the other things that are coming up at, at the Maker Fair. So stand by. This is going to be a fun one. Well, okay. This is that Weber grill automation project. And remember, this is going to be more of just an anatomy um, kind of uh, video as opposed to a very detailed implementation one um, but I think you'll find it interesting um, this project happened got started oh maybe gee a year ago uh, over a Christmas holiday a little more than a year ago and I got some fun gifts for Christmas that related to Arduino I wanted to integrate a lot of pieces and do something uh, useful so this project is designed to control a charcoal fire in a, in a Weber grill Anybody who's ever attempted to do that know it's, knows that it's pretty hard to maintain a low temperature, say uh, 225, 250 degrees, um, in order to do something like uh, smoking in a Weber grill. I'm actually a vegetarian, so this is more for my kids and my family um, than it is for me, but um, it was fun doing the technology piece uh, nonetheless. So the pieces that are integrated here are uh, first of all, it's Arduino based. You can kind of see that under here and I'll go over these in more detail, but it's Arduino based with a display and some uh, buttons to do some control. I needed to sense temperature. I needed to control the burn of the fire somehow. I chose to do that through the oxygen part of the equation with some fans and uh, control the damper on top of the Weber grill um, with some servos um, and then tie it all together through a PID loop, which I'll cover in detail maybe in a different video. So quick anatomy uh, with the sort of uh, pointing and talking uh, method here. So this is the a module from Adafruit. It's their I squared C keypad shield. See, that's the part number 715, if you will. I, it was just really easy to solder up. They always provide a library. It has a two by 16 um, display, a character based display. And you can see it has those five buttons there for I.O. Uh, it uses I squared C, so that's only a couple pins to, to do all of this. In order to control some of the hardware that I built and bought, I did build this little custom shield, if you will. Uh, it just has some, as you can see, opto isolators and transistors. Uh, one to control the fans um, and another to control well, the opto isolator is for the servos just to make sure that that noise doesn't get back in uh, to my Arduino. On the left there, you can see the other component that I bought from Adafruit. It's the uh, thermocouple amplifier module number 269. It um, accepts an input from a K-type thermocouple. That's this device here. It'll measure well in excess of 1000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is perfect for the temperature range uh, in a grill. Um, this one here, provided by my friend Zach, um, is uh, encased in stainless steel, so that makes it even better for the grill project. And being about six inches long, that allows me to get it right into the area where the, the subject of the fire, the meat, is to make a, a good measurement. Also, you can see here just a few other miscellaneous uh, devices on this, the electronics part of the project. Over here, just some power filtering and uh, a way to do a little busing for the 12 volt uh, input. Um, everything's running off of uh, 12 volts. Um, and then on this side, just some terminal strips to allow connecting the fans and servos and various things in a little bit more robust manner than just taking them straight to the Arduino. And then finally, a couple of switches and an enunciator that beeps um, when something has gone awry. Proceeding from the electronics over to the mechanical marvel that is this thing here, um, I kind of went all out. We have, part of this is, you know, you use the tools you have, 
and um, part of it is I was really, really worried that those servos were going to get melted in the process. So a lot of it is thermal management, and I'll talk through that here in just a second. You can see that, no, this isn't the top of the Weber grill. What I did, and you can see that in this picture that's up on the screen now, is I made some chimneys, um, alternate chimneys, from that little damper on top of the grill that allowed me a little bit easier mechanical interface um, to do this kind of damper control. Um, now, I did discover that this 90 degree bend was a little problematic in terms of the flow, um, the draw up, up these chimneys. So I'm gonna modify that to something more of a 45 degree angle going forward. But other than that, this little you know method, this little mechanical construction worked out well. I prototyped it using the 3D printer to begin with up here, just to make sure you know, that the, the basic design would work well. And then to the right, you can see that's just a little cover for that um, display button board that I showed earlier. But this thing, if you just take sort of a top-down view and you think of how heat flows, you can imagine um, why I did what I did. These are the chimneys here, and there's two of them to get a, enough surface area to have a good flow. Um, these dampers, controlled by these servos, just move over the top of those um, chimneys under the control of the Arduino. Quick note about servos. I noticed when I coated this up, the servos jittered quite a bit. So I put a lot of filtering on the power supply, did lots of things, and then ultimately I did what everybody should do, Google their problems first and discovered that the time base on the Arduino is just not quite enough for the servos. So I may choose at some point in the future to add a little more expense and add a dedicated servo board with a dedicated time base that'll solve that jittering problem. Doesn't seem to be a big issue, so I'll have to decide whether to add that extra expense. But again, back to that heat flow, these things are hot, right? And heat would want to flow this way to get to, to this uh, servo. So this L-shaped cut in this, um, in this plate is designed to make a little bit of a thermal break in that direction. Um, that's from a conducted heat point of view. Um, the shield here, this is just aluminum angle, is meant to be a radiated heat uh, block. Um, this uh, circuit board wasn't only convenient, it was intentional to be non-conductive. Assuming that, you know, the heat, the temperature from here to here would be um, um, sufficiently different that it wouldn't melt that plastic. And finally, and this one's probably over the top, I put this little copper heat sink here in the middle of this steel rod that con connects the servo to this damper um, to kind of block any heat that may go in that direction. You may notice the metal on these dampers looks different than maybe things you've seen. It's actually titanium. Uh, again, using the materials you have, um, we ha I have titanium from my son's knife making business and a mill that let us cut this out. Similarly, all this metal cutting here was done on the mill, um, including the circles and the L shapes. So these servos, two of them, just drive, driven in tandem parallel from the same, actually the same uh, transistor, isolated by an opto-isolator, are controlled back and forth. I do supply out here a separate 12 volts and signal that comes from that main Arduino board through this cable. I happen to have this wire, which is cool. A couple thick wires for the 12 volts, a couple thin wires for the signal. So that really rounds out the anatomy here. Um, I'm gonna do a separate uh, video in detail about the PID loop, because I think it's fascinating. Um, and a little bit of a tour of the software here. All right, so I think you get the idea. Uh, the temperature is set using these buttons and displayed on the top of the display. The actual temperature of the grill is measured using um, this thermocouple and displayed on the bottom. Just to note it says SIN because this is set in simulation mode already in anticipation of the Maker Faire. And then the, through the uh, PID loop magic, it opens the vent in response to the temperature. And if the vent alone doesn't do the job, it uh, increases the percent of the fan speed. All in all, trying to control the temperature, essentially make the um, actual measurement match the set point. So that's the idea. And um, I have done at least one live burn test and it's pretty close and it's time for another. So if you want to stop out to the Maker Faire, you can see this live in all its glory. Um, 
albeit with a simulated fire. But I think it's um, a pretty fun mix of a lot of things integrated together. All right, as promised, just a quick glimpse of one other thing you'll see at the Maker Fair. This is the aquarium automation project all finished up. I did an extensive video on this capacitive sensing on this side. What I've added since then is this float sensor on this side that's about to trip and uh, buttoned up all the electronics for uh, safety at the top and added some uh, lights. Um, so come and chat with me about this project and all the other projects at the Maker Fair. As always, if you like this video, click the like button. If you really like it, subscribe and tell all your friends. Thanks, bye.